ladies and gentlemen, look at Kong, the eighth wonder of the world. In this review, I will be taking a look at the McFarlane King Kong figure. The figure was released in the year 2000 as a part of the Movie Maniacs Series 3. Starting off with the packaging, the figure comes in a deluxe window box packaging showcasing the figure inside. I like how the front resembles an actual film cell. I also like the black and white close up image of the face since this movie was in black and white. This side has several product shots of the figure. The back shows off other figures in the Movie Maniacs Series 3. This side is meant to look like a poster. Here is the top. The bottom yet again shows off more figures from McFarlane Toys. Now let's take a look at one of the best King Kong figures to have ever been made in my opinion. Even though this Kong was released in 2000, it beautifully captures the look and design of the 1933 film. The one downside, some might argue, is that it is based off one specific scene. While the film was in black and white, they did color this Kong, and the paintwork turned out fantastic. The sculpt work too for that matter. I love a good roaring Kong, and they nailed it. The use of black wash brings out all of the sculpted detail. The eyes are wonderfully painted as well. They gave the figure so much more character, and are quite lifelike. Not only does the head look good from the front, but also from the side. The body looks just as amazing. The skin on the chest has cracks and wrinkles like real skin would have. But the star of the show has to be the sculpted hair. It turned out so great, and there is a brown paint wash over all the hair to even further bring out all the sculpted detail. Even though this is an action figure, it is more of a display piece, and why not display one of, if not, the best scene from the movie? This obviously being when Kong has been captured and chained up. Yet another great attention to detail is the fact that they used real metal chains. This definitely adds to the awesome display value. The ankles contain shackles on them as well. The legs and feet turned out just as good as the upper half of the body. The feet still have the wrinkled skin like the chest has. Not only do the bottoms of the feet have peg holes, but even the bottoms have sculpted detail. Here is a look at the back side. I really feel like they went above and beyond with all the sculpted detail, especially on all the hair. Going over the articulation, the head cam looks side to side. The arms can go forwards and backwards. The left arm has an elbow cut. The right arm lacks an elbow cut, but can still go forwards and backwards. The further back you go, it will cause the head to slightly move. This is because the sculpt of the arm hits the head. The waist can rotate. The legs can kick forwards and backwards. The first accessory up is a little Fay Ray. What good is depicting the scene without the star of the actual film? Here she is wearing an elegant red dress. And even this little figure has a wash over it to bring out the sculpted detail. Now she is in a fixed pose and does not contain any articulation. She is in a state of shock, looking up at the mighty Kong breaking out from its shackles. Obviously at this scale, you're not going to get photo quality detail in the face, but it actually turned out better than I was expecting. It's not the best, but definitely could have been a lot worse. With Kong's open right hand, you can actually get him to hold onto her. By doing so, you get some great looking photography. I really like the look of this here. Finally, we come to the platform Kong was standing on when he was on display in Broadway. Once again, it is pretty accurate to the platform used in the movie. Minus one thing, which most will already know what I'm referring to. Just as with Kong, this base also contains some actual real metal chains. They could have just had them on Kong, but the fact they added them to this too was a very nice touch. Instead of this just being a gray plastic, they also added extra paint detail. This gives it more of a premium feel. The King Kong text is the only thing about this I don't care for. I get why they added it, but it isn't movie accurate, 
and I personally just don't like it. What's worse is they added a trademark logo. Here's a look at the underside. And finally here's Kong standing on the platform. Even though all this captures one specific scene in the film, in my opinion they chose the best scene to recreate. We have had many basic Kong figures throughout the years. It's nice to have one with the shackles and chains on him. That's why I mentioned this is much more of a display piece than an action figure. As a big fan of King Kong and gorillas in general, I absolutely love this set. If you are a fan of King Kong and don't already own this set, I highly recommend that you do. Comparing the McFarlane Kong next to another Kong figure, here is the NECA Kong. The NECA figure is smaller and has more brown color on the hair. The NECA one also lacks the shackles. And for those interested, here is the NECA Kong figure on the display base. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as click on the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. Also, if you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button. Thanks for watching. The airplanes got it. Oh no, it wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast.